Those who forsake the law praise the wicked. Those who uphold the law resist them. Welcome to the Voice of Resistance. Here's your host, Randall Terry. I'm joined by Dr. Alveda King. She is the niece of the late civil rights activist and leader, Dr. Martin Luther King, one of my heroes, as you know from watching this show. She is also the director for African American Outreach for Priests for Life, the pro-life group based in Staten Island. Dr. King, it's a delight to have you. Thank you for taking Hello, the time. Hello, Randall. This is great. Good, it's good to, see, to you see you again. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, let's start with the director of African American Outreach. That must be a tough sled. <laughs> Actually working for perhaps one of the largest pro-life organizations in America and largest Catholic pro-life organization in America, uh, it's a challenge. And I met Father Frank Pavone in the late 1990s. Now He's you're not a national, Catholic, right? I'm not Catholic. Okay. He's the national director of Priest for Life, and soon after I met Janet Morana, executive director. But we had so many things in common, and when I first met Father Pavone, he was quoting my uncle, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s 1967 Christmas sermon that my uncle spoke just a few months before he was killed. Mm. And he said, basically, if we respect the human personality, we won't kill anybody. And as Father Pavone quoted that, I said, you know, that's absolutely true. And my uncle was pro-life, I'm pro-life. And Father Pavone and I began to talk, and over the next few years, we began to appear together and do some pro-life work together. And formally, almost 10 years ago now, I became the director of African American Outreach for Priests for Life. Well, there has been, as you know, this tension in the African American community because the polling data shows that most African Americans are in fact pro-life, Yeah. but it also shows that overwhelmingly they will vote party line with the Democratic Party. Obviously, I think the number was 92% of African Americans voted for President Obama, even though he is diehard supporter of child killing. So what do you do in that arena. I mean, that would be, it would seem to me to be pretty difficult. And, and ultimately, what's your goal? Over the last 10 years, I devoted almost all of my time to making sure that we inform, educate, and activate the African-American community as to the truth that abortion harms all babies, often harms mothers, that abortion is decimating the communities of America and the African American community is most impacted because we have about 13 percent of African American African Americans populating this great nation and yet we get about one-third of the abortions that's by design from Planned Parenthood uh, founded by racist eugenicist Margaret Sanger who said that colored people are like weeds and they need to be exterminated let's not let that word get out but let's uh, put it in a pretty package and, and go after them. Uh, and that She's is what they've successful. done. That's they've what they've very done. Successful. Mm -hmm. Do you find a receptive ear? It, what's the hearing that you get in the African-American community when you bring this to them? Say, look, you've got a Planned Parenthood right here in your public school or right next door, and they're, they're targeting you. When I started several years ago, people said, that's something that rich, white, Republican men in closed room <laughs> smoking cigars are making up. But we begin to, through efforts such as films like My Alpha 21 by Life Dynamics, Blood Money, the film, uh, there, the story of John, a baby who was aborted and uh, left to die after he was aborted, which by the way, the President of the United States says that if a baby was marked for abortion, if the baby lives, leave the baby to die because the intent was to abort the baby. And so I guess to answer your question, what's so remarkable is that while many African Americans will be pro-life and think that's wrong, they could still vote for candidates that think it's, thinks it's okay to abort babies or to harm those babies and the wombs of the mothers. So there's a disconnect. People cannot mm. see the connection between morality and letting your vote follow those values that you know are right in your heart. There's been a disconnect. It'd be like voting for Herod after he authorized the murder of the babies at Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. God have mm -hmm. mercy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's time for me to take a break. I have been joined by Dr. Elvita King and we will be back and join her visit uh, in another segment. Hope you're enjoying it. You're listening and watching The Voice of Resistance. If you own a business, 
and would like to advertise on our program, please contact us. We are currently seen on over 130 television stations from coast to coast. We air at 8 p.m. Eastern, and then all times are local. We have a lot of reach, friend, and this is an opportunity at a great price for you to get your product or your service in front of hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of people. Also, if there's something that's important to you and you'd like to have a month where you just say thank you to this ministry or promote a certain ministry or a certain cause, contact us. Our rates are incredibly affordable. You'd be surprised. And you, again, can reach into hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of homes. We're currently seen in possibly in over 30 million homes. So give us a call, give us an email, and we'll put a commercial up for you. It took me 14 years to write it. Four rewrites, countless edits. I poured my heart and soul into Dragon Slayers. It points a very inspiring and painful book to write. I encourage you to go to our website and look at the reviews that we have gotten from readers of this book and then avail yourself. It's an allegory and I, I promise you, you'll be inspired.